Hey YouTubers, welcome back. And today we're gonna to talk about relative mass. Now, before we talk about relative, uh, take the concept of things that you can measure, like the mass of this object, uh, or the volume in a bottle of water, uh, or the volume of gas in a balloon, uh, and related to moles, uh, we need to talk about relative mass. Now, what is a relative mass? Well, if you look at the periodic table, boom, any one of them, let's say this carbon, you will see that there is an atomic number, six, and a mass number, 12. This mass number, 12, is what we call a relative mass, okay? And the relative mass uh, for this periodic table has been set or standardized by 112, the mass of a carbon-12 atom. So all the mass, all the different masses of all the different elements on this periodic table has been set by the, has been set by taking 112, the mass of a carbon-12 atom. And since a carbon-12 has the mass of uh, 12, 112 of it will be just equal to 1. Very simple. Okay? Now, in your course of studies, you will come across AR and MR. AR is simply the relative atomic mass. So, for example, here I have two elements, aluminum and iron. What is the relative mass of aluminum? Well, the relative mass of aluminum is here, 27. So, let me write that down. What about the relative mass of iron? Well, let's look at a pair table and there we go. There's 26 and there's 56. Well, it's the 56. That's the bigger of the two numbers. And so that's your relative mass. Now, what if you come across formulas? All right, like this or this. Hmm. They are no longer atoms. They are compounds or molecules. Okay, so what you need to do is now count the MR, which is the relative molecular mass or the relative formula mass. So for NaCl, what is the relative uh, formula mass? Well, take the mass of Na, which is 23, plus the mass of chlorine, which is 35.5, which gives you 58.5. That is the relative mass of sodium chloride. Okay, so what about the relative mass of hyd uh, water? So well, there's two units of hydrogen, right? So it's two times one because that's the mass of hydrogen. And you add it to 16, the mass of oxygen. Okay, and that should give you 18. What about nitrogen gas, right? Nitrogen. Well, there's two atoms of nitrogen that make up nitrogen gas. So it should be 2 times 14, which is 28. All right, and now we have calcium carbonate. What's the mass of that? Well, calcium is 40 plus 12 plus 3 oxygens, okay? And that will give me 3 times 16. And so you add them up, that should be about 100. So these are all relative mass. And now, to make sense of relative mass to the concept of mole, relative mass are actually unitless. That's why you don't see grams over here, all right? You don't see grams on the periodic table and stuff like that. That's because relative mass are unitless. To make them into units, you have to go through an easy conversion, which is to learn a new vocabulary word, Instead of calling it relative mass, you can call it molar mass or molecular mass. And when you do that, you basically take all these mass that you've done down here and you give them a unit. And what's the unit of a molar mass? The unit of a molar mass is grams per mole. Now how many grams per one mole of that substance? So. <clears throat> If you look at aluminum, one mole of aluminum will weigh how much? Well, one mole of aluminum will weigh 
27 grams. So it's 27 grams per mole of aluminum. Iron, well, a mole of iron will be 56 grams. So one mole of iron will be, the molar mass of iron will be 56 grams per mole. And for sodium chloride will be 58.5 grams per mole. The molar mass of water would be 18 grams per mole. The molar mass of water would be 28 grams per mole. And the molar mass of calcium carbonate would be 100 grams per mole. Now, there you go.